Hello everyone, I'm Meredith. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be starting another reading vlog. So this week I'm going to be doing another week where I read books from one country. Last time I did books from Thailand, so I'll link the vlog down below and in the cards if you want to watch it. I had a lot of fun doing that vlog. It was definitely cool reading books from Thailand. And this week I'm going to be reading books from Zimbabwe. And when I do these vlogs, I also try and watch some documentaries about the country or just movies or something from that country. And I also like to try my hand at cooking some cuisine or baking from that country. So you have that to look forward to as well. But for now, I'm just going to talk about the books that I will be reading. So my main goal is to read these two physical books that I have here. And then I do also have some audiobooks that I will try and get to throughout the week as well. But of course I work, so I don't have all the time in the world, unfortunately. And I also have to clean the house and, you know, adult stuff. Hip, hip. Oh. But these two books will be my main focus. And so the first of these is Waiting for the Rain. And I have actually already started this. I'll talk about what these books are about as I'm reading them. But yeah, this is the first one. And then the second physical book I have here is House of Stone. So yeah, they're the two main books for this week. The two that I'm going to attempt to listen to on audiobook. I should get to at least one of these. I don't know if I'll get to both. I have here Nervous Conditions. And I also have The Book of Memory. So yeah, hopefully I can get to those. But we'll just see how I go. But before I go into the reading, another thing I do do when I do this vlog is I like to support a small business or a charity from that country. I wanted to purchase bookmarks, but that is just really hard to find. Bookmarks are just a very niche thing. So I just look up something cute that I can put on my shelves. And this time I supported a charity and this was the Catherine Hamilton charity. And so I got this little pamphlet with it as well. This is actually centered in Ethiopia. But I do believe that the proceeds to what I purchased go to Zimbabwe because it was made by women in Zimbabwe. Um, and it's mainly focusing on helping to take care of women who have obsteric fitzilla, which is an internal injury caused by prolonged, unrelieved, obstructed labor. It's a hole between the birth canal and the bladder or rectum. It leaves a woman leaking urine or feces and sometimes both. 93% of survivors deliver a stillborn baby wasn't traumatic enough these women are often ostracized and pushed to the edge of their society forgotten and invisible so it's about supporting women and giving them quality maternal health care and so i will link the website for this down below but this pamphlet has so much great information and i don't know if you're ready for this but this is handmade they're all slightly different because they are all again handmade um but i got this little buffalo, isn't it cute? And again, handmade, just <laughs> so cute. And it actually tells you who made um, your craft. She hand wrote her name on here and it has a little picture of her. And it does have the name of the buffalo and its name is Portia. And it says, it wants to be my friend. And it has here, I think, what possibly friend is in her language, which is Shamwari. They are very excited about their new adventure and are wearing their favorite sweater just in case it gets chilly. Each product is lovingly handmade and is individual and cheerful as the lady who knitted it. This one's a little keychain, but they also do just like full size toys. So if you're looking for something to purchase someone for their birthday or when it gets close to December and you're looking for Christmas presents, these are so cute and the quality is so good as well. This is adorable. Like I couldn't knit anything this beautiful. Little Portia is going to live there. You can see her. Hello everyone. I'm just here to update my progress on waiting for the rain. I have read a decent amount of this so far. So I'm on page 59, but this is only like 180 pages. So yeah, about just under a third, I would say. So not too bad. So this is a really interesting story. So when was it published? 1975. Obviously that's quite a few years ago. And that I would say was possibly a point where some families in Zimbabwe were facing, were experiencing possibly for the first time, someone sort of embracing modernity and the individualistic lifestyle. 
And so it's about this family who are very much a collective group. And the son, called Lucifer, basically has gone to school and has been traveling. And it's kind of hinted that he is going to move away. I can't remember where, America or, the Euro or Europe or something. But he is, it's basically hinted that he is leaving Zimbabwe for good. And so he's come to visit his family again, which he hasn't done in a little while. And you can see how much his choices are affecting the family. And so this is kind of just covering his visit. We get perspectives from a huge amount of the family. There are a lot of members of this family group, which I find so interesting because I'm obviously from Australia and we are very much a modern society. And, you know, you just live with your parents and then you move out and, you know, you don't, have your parents come and move in with you kind of thing but this is where like the grandparents and the parents and the kids and then possibly grandkids all live together as a collective group and that is the value of this society and we have this son who doesn't value that and is much more modern and wants to go and embrace his own life make his own choices and you see how that is affecting the family especially for like the older men of the family because they saw him as the success of the family the one that was going to hold up their legacy and be the successor and probably the one that would provide for them and to see him just leave them is really crushing them and you can see how it is affecting this group as a whole and it's really fascinating i'm really enjoying this the first chapter was bizarre and i was like holy shit this is gonna be a tough read i don't even know what was happening in that and i was like if this whole book is written like this I'm not going to understand a single thing. But then after that, it's all pretty straightforward. I think the only thing I'm struggling with, with this is that there are so many characters and remembering how they're all related is a little bit difficult, but I'm slowly getting there. I'd say the character I like the most is the mother. She is feisty and passionate and in her passions quite angry. It seems like she's not in complete control of her emotions, but... I love that and I love how proud she is of her family and you can tell she really loves her son and that it's really breaking her and I think the thing that is so sad about this is that they were writing him the son Lucifer heaps of letters and he was just ignoring them and honestly Lucifer's an asshole but we're slowly seeing why he is the way that he is and it's really interesting to slowly get to know him. He's, while well, he's an asshole and I don't really like him, I think he's a selfish dickhead. <laughs> I'm a cotton headed ninny muggins. He is fascinating to read about, especially when you contrast him with the family and just the completely different ways that they think is so fascinating and their values are just the opposite. And I really, really find that interesting. But of course, with this, you've got all of these really interesting, fascinating dynamics between all of the characters and they're shown so well through the dialogue. I like that this is quite a universal topic like people from any country could potentially relate to this plot whether it is that you're from a country that the culture is a collective culture and you are transitioning to a modern you know society or you just your family itself is very close-knit and doesn't want you to leave it's it's very much you no know, you stay here and you live the kind of life we lived i feel like in any country people can relate to that so i find that really great and i love seeing something that i've read many times i know of people that have experienced reading this from this perspective and this culture and this country is really interesting and i'm really enjoying it hello everyone I am just here to update that I did end up finishing Waiting for the Rain yesterday. I just came home from work and just read a bunch of it. I stayed up quite late because I just needed to finish it to know what happened at the end. Um, and I ended up really, really liking this one. This was so sad in parts though. Like it was literally capturing the disconnect between the generations of this family the impact of the colonization and the European influence and how the younger generation were just not connecting with the older generation because they were being influenced through education, different like values and just, it was painful. Like the scene with the peanut butter, I cannot. 
Steve Reed, an excellent free throw shooter, will have the honor of shooting the technicals. Look at here, look at here. Bobby Knight just threw his chair clear across the free throw lane. Like, Lucifer was a dick. He was such an asshole. Like, I know he was good in capturing what the, like, themes and messages were of this book, but, like, he can die. I also really liked the kind of elements that the other brother brought. He was actually the eldest son, but the family deemed him a failure. They were really proud of Lucifer and wanted him to be the leader of the family after the dad passes away. And yeah, they believe the eldest brother was a failure. He wasn't educated. He just went around and played drums basically. And his, what he brought to the story was also really sad because I felt like he was trying to have a relationship with his family. And because he wasn't what they wanted him to be, he was being shunned and pushed away. So it, the contrast is really interesting because you saw how desperate the family were to have a relationship with Lucifer. And then the other brother comes in and he's trying to have a relationship with them. But because he wasn't successful like they wanted, they just shunned him. And they were so desperate to have Lucifer in their lives. And it's like, you've got a son here that's trying, but because he's not what you want him to be, it's just like, bye, bitch. But yeah, it just shows like the characters were so nuanced and complex and very very flawed and felt like real people and by the end of it I felt like I knew them so well and understood their motivations and I felt quite emotional about pretty much all of them even though majority of them were not the greatest people. There was one scene in particular between the grandfather and the, the eldest son that was so emotional it was talking about the impact for the grandfather of colonization and, you know, being in the war and everything. And I want to read out the section because I don't think I can eloquently convey it. So the grandfather's talking to his grandson and he says, We couldn't understand this desire of their calls to call everything mine, mine, mine. What they didn't know, which we knew, which made us survive, was that we owned nothing and it wasn't our own cunning that made us live. Everything was the earth's. But they went about destroying everything and claiming things for themselves. Nothing was sacred to them, and they wouldn't respect what was sacred to us. What else could we do but fight them? We fought them, and here we are today. For those of us who saw those battles, our homes and our granaries are still burning. And then another part a bit later is, You may not live to see this land return to you, but what's that to you or to me if your drum remains your own? As long as you play hard and listen to what it says and follow what it tells you, enough. Let them, or whoever wants it, have the land. You keep your heart. Later on, you too will know that what grows on the land, what you see outside, first grows in the heart. Without first taking root in the heart, whatever grows outside quickly withers and dies. And they can touch you on the outside, but they can't touch your heart. <sighs> yeah, talking about how people felt when their country was colonized and ways that they maintained some agency and ownership over things and how while they can own the land and actual structures they can't own how you feel and how you feel will always be yours and I think that that is just fucking beautiful like who was not moved by that Jesus it also was talking about familial bonds and not wanting to let go of your children and not wanting them to go off and do their own thing wanting them to stay and and be a part of your life and take care of you and live the way that you want them to and how forcing your children to live a certain way strains the relationship I just wanted to read out this quote so I believe this was from the perspective of the mother this is when the son is finally leaving the village and this sentence just like crushed my soul. As she kneels there, she reflects sadly how babies wean, grow up, mature, and become strangers to their own parents. <laughs> In terms of my rating, I don't, I don't know what to rate this. Like, I feel like this is a five star, but I don't have that fully five star feeling. But I don't know if this is just because this is something different from what I'm used to. So I'm giving it a 4.5, but I may give it a 5. I'm going to sit on it for a bit. I think that I just feel like the way women were treating this is holding me back. Because I feel like for a book written 
in this time it's actually pretty good and who am I you know a white person in Australia in modern day to sit here and critique that I don't have the context I don't really have the history I don't have enough knowledge to really comment so I'm not really sure how to feel about that but yeah it was really good I highly recommend if you like emotional books about those topics and just like familial relationships and drama and just all of that jazz I think you'll quite enjoy this so today I have started two that is not two Meredith that's four two <laughs> I've started two things today so I have started House of Stone but I'm like 20 pages in and while I've been cooking I've started listening to the book of memory and I'm up to chapter four so I haven't read a bunch of this one either, but this one's quite short. It is the next day and I read a bunch of House of Stone yesterday. I'm now on page 120 but I did read about 30 pages this morning. So this book is a bit weird because I feel like the blurb doesn't really capture what this book is about and does it a disservice. I was incredibly, what's the word, like, mm, why am I so bad with language? It was very like off-putting that's not the word but I can't think of, of what the word is but I just felt like it took me quite a while to feel grounded in this story and sort of feel like I knew what was going on because it was so different to what the blurb said it was gonna be so this is about a young man and the book starts when the people he's lodging with have lost their son like he's disappeared and the main character is the last person to have seen him and he was basically taken by police and no one knows where he is now and the blurb kind of makes it sound like it's a story about the characters in the present and searching for this son and the main character's weird relationship with the parent it's actually mostly the past so I was very taken aback because what is happening is that the main character is basically chronicling the father's life so this is like he considers his surrogate father and very passionately so because he's got massive daddy issues because he didn't know his own father and on the man that and his uncle raised him and on his uncle's deathbed he said who his father is and his father's this like horrible person but we don't really know why and we don't really know who he is we just know that he's not a good person and so the main character is struggling with that so he's kind of like latching on to his surrogate father and he's getting him to tell him his life story and that's kind of what this has been so far like we jump straight into the past pretty much and I was again it was very off-putting for me because I was like what is happening um so yeah majority of this has just been the surrogate father's past there's not really anything about the main character or the boy that's missing or the wife it is just so far this man's past and it's kind of chronicling his life during the war when Zimbabwe was trying to get its independence so it was actually still called what was the name Rhodesia so it's kind of about his life during the war and how that affected his life and his relationships and it's mostly his romance with this young woman who was kind of part of a resistance against like the white government and leadership and wanting to gain their independence back as Zimbabwe and he has a very interesting romance with this woman and it's kind of about what happened to her where is she now because he ends up obviously marrying someone else and I'm now grounded in the story and actually quite enjoying it but definitely like the first like 60 or so pages I was really confused because I was like what is going on like this is not what the book said it was because I was expecting it to be about them trying to find 
this boy that's missing and maybe like bits of the past put in but mainly about the present and them looking for him and what's happening at the moment and everything and the main character is very weird <laughs> and I actually quite enjoy his character and what um, is being done with him he's an unreliable narrator which is on the blurb but I didn't really think about that but he definitely is because he's weird and very unhealthily attached and desperate for the approval of his surrogate father and he's very pestering like it's getting to the point where the surrogate father is kind of like fuck off and he's like tell me more about your past like it's it's very weird and I'm enjoying it hello oh hello everyone welcome to Meredith's kitchen and in today's episode please don't today we're gonna be making pumpkin fritters so yeah these say that they are a breakfast meal that is often cooked in a lot of South African countries and I'm gonna be making this one it's on the SBS food website I'll link it down below pumpkin fritters I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel about that but things cross is good <laughs> Alrighty, they are done and I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> I'm a little bit uncertain. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. I'm going to try without yogurt first just to see what it tastes like on its own. Okay. It's weird. Different. Not bad, just odd. Mm. Yeah, with the cinnamon and the yogurt, it's actually really nice. That first bit was a bit, ooh, not sure, but yeah, if you like fritters, I think you might like this. They're almost like just little pancakes with pumpkin, which sounds so odd. And then with like a bit of cinnamon, but yeah, it's not too bad with the yogurt. Hello, everyone. If you're wondering, Meredith, why do you look so much more successful and gorgeous and put together than normal that's because it's my high school reunion tonight and i want to look way more successful gorgeous put together than i actually am so that's the look we're going for today did i pull it off <laughs> so i have actually read and finished the book of memory i'm sorry that i like didn't update part way through i just forgot or couldn't be fucked i don't know it just didn't happen <laughs> So the title of this book is very clever because the main character's name is Memory and this book is about her memories. This is about a woman who is in prison and she has been convicted of murder and is going to be executed. And the story is leading up to her execution while she goes back and kind of relives her life and how she got to be where she is. While also sort of exploring her life in prison, the people that she's in prison with and her feelings leading up to her eventual death. I didn't actually really enjoy this much at all, which I'm really shocked by because I was really excited going into this. It sounds like the type of book I would love. And I loved the content. I loved the actual story. I just didn't like 
the writing. It was not my running style at all. I also think that the audiobook didn't help because the narrator was very monotone and the way this this was written was very to the point. Like memory felt very passive in her own story. Like it was just very telling her telling us things and I didn't really feel like I was getting her emotions and I feel like a lot of the stuff that happened to her was quite awful sort of towards the beginning of her life her younger brother drowns and then she is sold to another family and she's actually albino and so she also has a lot of horrible treatment because of the fact that she looks so different I just feel like I got no emotion from her so it was like I felt emotional reading it because obviously what was happening was horrible it was talking about quite horrific events in Zimbabwe's history and so like I got all of that and again, I enjoyed, well, enjoyed the contents of the story. Like, I felt for the content. But I, I didn't feel much for her, which I just felt weird. Because I just felt like she was very, again, passive. And she's talking about these really horrific, sad things that happened in her life. And she's just talking about it like she's talking about what she's going to have for dinner. It just felt weird. It was like bring some emotion out of her and again the narrator was pretty monotone I don't know if that was intentional to show that she was quite emotionally numb because of the way that she had been treated she never really had an opportunity to express her emotions in a healthy way I don't know but it honestly I just it didn't work for me and I don't like books written like this where the characters are more just telling us what is happening and what has happened and we don't really feel like we're getting deep into them and their emotions and what they're feeling. I don't like when it's more just this is what happened. I prefer more character driven stuff and for a book about a woman's life I was expecting more emotion from her and I just didn't really feel that. Yeah I just didn't love it but again I love I did really appreciate the content. I think it's a beautiful story. Um, it's definitely covering so many topics and you know, it was covering this woman going back and reliving her life and, and coming to terms with the things that led up to her being convicted for a murder she didn't commit. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a really beautiful idea. And I think that the execution will work for some people. Like, I honestly do just think this was a me not gelling with the writing style. I don't think this was badly written. And I possibly would maybe in the future physically read it um, because again I don't think the audiobook helped because the narrator was so monotone so I think that being able to read it myself and put more emotion into the tone of the voice might help. Hello everyone sorry for the absolutely horrendous lighting it is night time but I just wanted to update so every time I do this vlog series I like to watch a documentary set in the country and just learn something else about the country and so I just watched one set in Zimbabwe. I watched a pretty sad one this time. It was about children living in poverty in Zimbabwe. So it was a really tough watch. I'm linking it down below as I always do but um, really what I just preface with caution if you're gonna watch it because it's it's tough but I will also link down below an update of the children in the um, documentary stories. They do have a nice sort of ending if you will. They have received help and it's quite moving to see. So um, I'll link down below about their lives now and where you can donate to help other children be able to access education um, and be able to take care of themselves and their families. But yeah, the documentary was kind of covering about an operation that happened, I believe, in 2005 called sort of Clear Up, where the government basically decided to destroy a lot of slum areas and it left up to like 700,000 people, many being children, homeless. An aid epidemic happening and so a lot of children are growing up with AIDS, their parents have AIDS, there are lots of children who have lost their parents. And it's horrific seeing children having to work at such a young age. And, you know, it was absolutely horrific. It's, it's just so cruel and unfair that these things happen. I will note that these children are incredible. Their resilience and strength and intelligence and just... 
willingness to care for their family and strive for a better life and the will to survive is incredible and it's incredible what human beings will do to survive and I learned a little bit more about the country obviously it's not like that everywhere in Zimbabwe I just watched a documentary on a certain you know topic but yeah whenever I like sort of see things like this I just feel so angry because there are such greedy rich people in the world and all they want to do is make themselves richer and have more lavish lifestyles and buying stupid things and there's literally children who work every day just to eat a small bit and keep their parents alive and you just think why is that happening but anyway let's not go down that rabbit hole Hello. I'm not wearing any makeup I look god awful let's not talk about it <laughs> you know what we should talk about though let's talk about House of Stone where do I even start like how does one just start talking about a book like this? I don't know. Maybe we'll start with the fact that I'm giving this five stars. And I think this might be my first five star read of the entire year. I think possibly, I can't remember. But uh, it's probably my favorite book that I've read so far this year. So that's something. But how do I talk about the contents? Because there are about 50 million fucking things happening in this book. And every single little itsy bitsy thing, like each singular sentence, means a million things. And I could spend the rest of my life talking about this book. And I probably would still only skim the surface. Am I being dramatic? Probably. But, man, this book. Not only was it so clever and masterful at bringing in all of these intense and emotional and topics that need to be talked about it was also just a fucking good story that i could just not put down <sighs> all right let's get my notes and try and talk about this in a way that is concise so i'm not here for 10 years and leaves you with enough that you're wanting to read this because i want everyone to well i was about to say i want everyone to read this but i don't because this book is very fucked up and um honestly difficult to read and I would not recommend this to a lot of people um so you know trigger warnings everything look into it um and be in a place where you feel like you can read it because it's not easy and honestly with what's going on in the world I probably shouldn't have even read this right now but you know whatever I did it so yeah just be careful um but fuck if you feel like you can handle it it's good so like if I was like what like, if someone said to me, okay, Meredith, what is House of Stone about? Like, what is the core theme of the book? I cannot... I don't... <sighs> First of all, I'd be like, how dare you make me narrow it down to one thing? But to make this video not 10 years long, if I had to narrow it down to what I think the main point of this book is... feel like again there's so many things so this is just what I think maybe was like the main one possibly probably I don't know but just one thing to start off the discussion is that I think this was talking about how when you do not talk about the past and a country's history and you do not let people openly grieve and have some form of closure and have people admit their mistakes and have ramifications for what they have done. People cannot move on. And when people cannot move on, the past repeats. And the future generations are not growing up in environments where they can live without the repercussions of what has happened. And therefore they will repeat the same sort of things. Is that making any sense? So this book is covering the past of Zimbabwe and the genocide that happened. Many, 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 many people were killed and it's a really horrific part of history. What happened to so many people is absolutely horrific. A lot of this book will probably keep me up at night for a long time to come and I'll probably never stop thinking about it because it's absolutely horrendous that this happened to people and I'm shocked that human beings can do these things to other people. It's just 
it's just awful. People went through absolute horrific experiences, saw absolutely horrific thing, things happen to people that they love or just other people from their country and then they are now supposed to just not talk about it. It's not something that's really spoken about from what I can gather and it's not a history that is given much voice and a lot of people are choosing to not talk about it because it is so horrific and obviously that is understandable um, and I think that this book is talking about how when you don't talk about it or it's not acknowledged people can't move on and when people are traumatized horrifically to the extent that people must have been during this time they don't behave in ways that I guess are uh, ways that they would normally behave and they are doing things to the next generation or doing things in front of them and teaching them things that are not really what they would have originally stood for but because they haven't had their trauma resolved and they haven't had a chance to move on they're stuck and this next generation coming in are just going to continue doing the same sort of things and so it's kind of talking about that and we follow this character who has basically grown up with his uncle and he has learnt that his father is someone very bad and he ends up being in a position where he has an opportunity to live with this family um, and he kind of sees a happy family life that he never got to have and he wants to learn about their past and kind of insert himself into that family and and you know he acknowledges how important history is to gain his own identity and know who he is but he rejects the one that he has and he doesn't want to be evil like his father and so he's trying to insert himself into this setting but he is in doing so just rehashing the sort of things that his father did and he is a bad person and we are slowly seeing what a disturbed confused individual our narrator is and it's it's so disturbing and awful reading about such an unhinged character and you just can't put the book down because you're wondering what's going to happen at the end like the foreshadowing this is just intense and and you're just like I don't want to know what happens but I have to know and it's just crazy having this slowly unravel and and going back to the past and obviously everything there is horrific and it's just it's it's like horrific but literally genius I just don't know how to describe it and <sighs> I feel so stressed and I don't know if this was actually the author's intent and I might just be talking out of my ass here but I feel like the narrator that we had he was almost like a like metaphor for Zimbabwe which again I don't know if that's the case but it kind of felt like at times because you know Zimbabwe was, was finally given its own power again it was no longer controlled by white people it was no longer called Rhodesia the power was coming from within and it was almost like the country didn't know what it was it had a lot of different like political cultural groups and that's where the genocide happened because there was this distrust and fear it felt like that's what this character was like he didn't have an identity he didn't know what he was doing and his behaviors because of that were just malicious and cruel and unhinged and we kind of see the correlation maybe not necessarily he was a metaphor but he was showing what this new generation growing up are possibly feeling and going through because if they are especially when directly associated to the past and when no one's talking about it and then they're not you know being given opportunity to to explore it and understand it and process it and heal it is difficult again this is all just what I think if this is necessarily what happened I don't know but that's I guess the beauty of literature you're you get to figure it out for yourself so yeah this this book definitely is exploring the history of the country and kind of what is happening today and how the history impacts um, the lives of people today now obviously this is just capturing certain parts of the country it's obviously not what it's all like you know it's just what this author wanted to write but yeah I think I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here I didn't love the book of memory but these are two standout books for me this was a 4.5 I think I'm gonna leave it at that because these don't feel like they're quite at the same rating I was considering even this five but this is such an obvious five for me I just feel like 4.5 is where this one is but 4.5 is still really good but yeah I hope that you learned some stuff about Zimbabwe as well 
let me know in the comments if you're going to pick up any of these books. I'd actually be really intrigued and interested to know. And let me know a country you'd like me to possibly do next. I actually haven't got any plans for what my next one's going to be. But don't forget to check out the links down below to the charities. Um, and also just I'll put some information about the things that I sort of talk about in this video. And um, yeah, definitely if you're, um, again, if you feel like you are, are up for it. Um, go check the stuff below but yeah hopefully I'll see you in the next video but until then bye